um, with the, with a lot of the, the work that I'm doing, um, I'm just trying to pay tribute to those who have opened doors, uh, created opportunity for the next generation. Uh, the statement primarily that I'm making is don't forget those who lay the path for you. you know, always respect those who came before you. And whenever you see a piece that I do on a door, for instance, um, that door piece speaks to uh, opening doors and blazing trails for the next generation. Um, the use of doors I wanted to do because, you know, since the early times in the making of this country, you know, we have always had to find ways to create opportunities for ourselves. You know, during segregation, there's always was a battle of being accepted by the whole of society. And so we had to create our own society, even if it meant building it ourselves. One of the uh, major platforms and even, you know, that the so-called mainstream society has taken from is the juke joint, for, for, for example. Uh, if you look at guys like Chuck Berry, and, you know, some of the people that came before him and they would go to, you know, these clubs that was protected back in the country, back in the woods of the country and uh, a way of sanctuary that we could go and freely express ourselves without persecution. And uh, well, one gentleman used to go and he would find his inspiration. And a lot of people didn't really understand how, where he was getting his inspiration. They just knew that his sound uh, was magnificent. But what they didn't understand was that sound was an average thing, a normal thing in our community. You know, that gentleman's name was known as you know, Elvis Presley. You know. But what they didn't know was his sound was a typical thing in our community. And he would come and he would observe, you know, our people. And there was other people that, you know, Kid Rock, you know, also you know, drew his inspiration from our culture as well. And so when I'm doing my work, I'm making a point that never forget where it all originated. Never forget where it all started. When I do a piece on these doors, that's just my way of acknowledging that, you know, remembering those who were first, you know, those to, to open that door and create that door, therein the next generation comes through. And from, from that point, there will be a continual flow of generation after generation to walk that path. Ms. Shirley Chisholm, I was uh, doing some research on, you know, early politics and uh, abolitionist movement and things like that, Frederick Douglass and John Brown, a lot of those people, and some of the writings and stuff that in speeches that they would give in contempt with some of the norms of society. And I wanted to look more into, uh, for the research of creating this collection of people like Harriet Tubman, Sir John of Truth, and I came across uh, in doing that research, Shirley Chisholm and the way that she ran her political campaign uh, as uh, against corruption, corruption free uh, would be her policy. And being able to run America and make policies for America in a righteous way. And the way that she ran her campaign is, you know, unbought and unbossed. And I just, something about that, that still resonates today, probably even more so today than it did back then, because unbought and unbossed, you know, I mean, is a really big thing about today. You know, we don't like people who sell out, and obviously, we want to be our own boss. You know, especially here in Houston, I mean, that's all we talk about is being a boss. You know, that's the whole culture here, and so I felt that it was a really powerful concept, you know, to bring into my collection because you know, since she was the originator of that philosophy. You know, and I'm doing the door pieces and it's to pay tribute to those who are trailblazers of different ideals. And this being a primary idea of our society today, 
I wanted to acknowledge her by putting her on the door piece because she brought a very powerful message for you know, liberation and empowerment, not just for women, but for all peoples. Uh, as far as the glass <clears throat> with the uh, Shirley Chisholm piece, um, the glass really just plays to, it speaks to a uh, duality of consciousness. Um, no matter what the experiences are that we go to, I use the glass as a reminder as no matter what we go through in our lives, the struggle, the traumas, that there's always an opportunity to regroup and put those pieces back together. And so the reason that I use the mosaics and the broken shards of glass is to remind people that no matter what you go through in life, there's always an opportunity to bring those pieces back together, which is why I break the glass up and then put it back together. And so you'll see it put together in somewhat of a, a rough manner, but that's only just to be a symbol to remind people that, you know, it can, our experiences can sometimes be rough and traumatic, but there's always a time, uh, opportunity that we can refine it and put it all back together.